ever heard of the Starship Separation Mechanism? How does it work? And what are the basic requirements? Well, let's find out. Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, has discussed two new Starship and Super Heavy systems in the first two sections of a three-part discussion. Around the turn of the month, Starship's first flight-worthy Super Heavy booster was retrofitted with grid fins, a type of aerodynamic control surface. Those multi-ton car-sized fins have been speculated about since the original Starship was debuted in 2016. What was surprising was that the grid fins on Booster 4 had no retraction or deployment mechanism and were instead set in a deployed position after installation. For the clear understanding of the concept, let us first talk a little layout on the Starship system and payload. The Starship system from SpaceX is a fully reusable transportation system designed to service Earth orbit as well as missions to the Moon and Mars. This two-stage vehicle is made up of the Super Heavy rocket and the Starship, both of which are fueled by sub-cooled methane and oxygen. Starship is intended to evolve quickly in order to satisfy current and future customer needs while retaining the highest level of dependability. A Starship can deliver satellites, payloads, crew and freight to a multitude of orbits and landing places on Earth, the Moon or Mars. SpaceX's Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy rocket constitute a fully reusable transportation system designed to transport both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars and beyond. Starship will be the world's most powerful launch vehicle, capable of carrying more than 100 metric tons to Earth's orbit. The Starship is 120 meters tall, 9 meters wide, and has a cargo capacity of 100 tons to low Earth orbit. The Starship payload fairing is 9 meters in diameter and 18 meters in height, giving it the biggest usable payload volume of any present or in development launcher. This payload volume can be set up to accommodate both people and cargo. The volume of the payload is 1,100 cubic meters. For the payload, the Starship payload fairing is a clamshell structure that houses the cargo. Once installed, the clamshell fairings remain closed until the payload is ready to deploy. The clamshell fairing door is opened to deploy the payload and the payload adapter and the payload are tilted at an angle in preparation for separation. If numerous payloads are carried on a single flight, a rotating mechanism can be used to allow each satellite to separate with maximum clearance. The payload fairing door is closed once separation is confirmed and the payloads have cleared the fairing in preparation for the Starship's return to Earth. The Starship's 8-meter diameter deployable payload dynamic envelope enables the creation of innovative payloads, rideshare opportunities, and entire constellations of satellites on a single launch. For payloads requiring up to 22 meters of height, an enhanced payload volume is also available. The Starship payload attach fitting is intended for use with standard payload interface systems in single or multi-manifest configurations. SpaceX will either offer an integrate or a payload adapter and separation system or will incorporate a customer supplied adapter and separation system. As a starting point, Starship is compatible with Legacy Falcon 937 mm, 1194 mm, 1666 mm and 2624 mm clamp band interface requirements, including the possibility to host numerous payloads side by side due to the huge accessible diameter. SpaceX has extensive expertise designing and producing non-standard adapters and separation systems for customers with unique interface requirements. SpaceX manages to command the payload separation system while it is in flight. Starship using three axis altitude control or spin stabilization it should be noted that some spacecraft separation maneuvers may lower available payload volume. Collision avoidance maneuvers will be carried out if needed. Musk claims that SpaceX has decided to almost entirely remove any recognizable separation mechanism just a month after performing a partial test of the systems. Supposed to lock Starship and Super Heavy together and deploy the spacecraft in flight. Now for the Starship separation. 
There are primarily two types of launch vehicle separation strategies in rocketry. To attach and detach stages all require an actuating latch or frangible bolts. The distinctions emerge during stage separation. Some rockets, especially Russian vehicles, use hot staging, in which a separating stage ignites its engines just before or at the same time it is launched, blasting the stage below it. More typically, rockets' upper stages differ from lower stages before igniting and flying into orbit using either small solid rocket motors, small vernier thrusters, or, in SpaceX's case, spring-like mechanisms that can be tested and reused on the ground. Musk claims that Starship will have no separation device at all, defying decades of precedent. Instead, Musk felt that the separation mechanism was unnecessary at some point during the design or testing process, and that the same effect could be more or less recreated by using existing technologies on Super Heavy. Super Heavy could effectively flick Starship away from it by using the gimbaling Raptor engines on the booster to impart a small but significant rotation on the rocket moments before separation. Similar to how SpaceX currently deploys Starlink satellites from Falcon by spinning the upper stage end over and letting the spacecraft float away due to centripetal forces. Because Starship is around five times heavier than Super Heavy at stage separation, the spacecraft would effectively float away from the rocket in a straight and stable course, using cold gas thrusters to settle its propellant before igniting its six Raptor engines to fly into orbit, in exchange for the rather unconventional deployment profile. Keep in mind that the Starship, which ignites its engines five seconds after stage separation, will shut them down 521 seconds after liftoff, having achieved orbit. The vehicle, however, would complete less than one full circle before entering and landing in the Pacific Ocean, around 90 minutes after liftoff, 100 kilometers northwest of the Hawaiian island of Kauai. If this new strategy is successful, SpaceX may be able to avoid developing a pusher spring system capable of pushing a 1,300 ton Starship away from Super Heavy. That method is viable on Starship in part because the six Raptor engines are totally tucked away under a skirt, meaning there is no risk of nozzle damage from contacting the booster interstage. Hold thumbs guys, we are excited to know what's next. That was it for today. I hope you liked this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates. Until next time.